Go see these young cats, man. Ooh, saw me one dog. You come in, let's see what you got, big boy. What's going on, guys? Hail to the Hogs, back again with another video in the first round file series. So this will be the fourth installment of the first round file series, a series in which I go in depth on all of the potential Redskins prospects at pick number 13 of the 2018 draft. So today, um, I'm pretty excited to do this one. Finally get to switch it up to the offensive side of the ball. We're going to be talking about running back Darius Geis out of LSU. This is a player that a lot of guys are looking at. Um, a lot of the fans like, um, think that running back would be a great um, acquisition. We're pretty weak at running back, in my opinion. Um, I really like Chris Thompson, but I don't like his ability to be a feature back. Um, also... I kind of think Rob Kelly is a glorified fullback. Um, never was too impressed with Rob Kelly um, as a feature running back as well. So um, it's definitely a position where we could upgrade. And whether or not we should do that in the first round, um, that's pretty much the question. So we're going to be going in depth on the pretty much only prospect that we would take in the first round. Um, who it would be logical to take um, in the first round other than Saquon Barkley, who will 99% likely be off the board at pick 13. So let's talk about Darius Geis. Um, great player. 8.5 yards per carry his freshman year. Um, shared carries with L Leonard Fournette. Obviously played with Leonard Fournette a lot in LSU. He averaged 8.5 yards per carry his freshman year, which is um, pretty insane. Um, going into his sophomore year, sharing some more carries with Leonard Fournette, got down to 7.6 yards per carry. And then, as we all know, in the 2017 season, he suffered some knee injuries. Um, <clears throat> he only missed one game in 2017, but he was held back a lot due to this injury, um, couldn't play to his full potential. Um, so his full stat line for the 2017 season was 5.3 yards per carry, um, almost 1,300 yards rushing. I believe it was... 1251 exactly um, 11 touchdowns and two receiving touchdowns so the numbers are great when you look at them um, the guy put up great numbers at the combine as well um, incredibly quick for his size um, 449 at 224 um, to move that fast carrying that much weight um, is pretty impressive at the running back position so with that being said um, obviously he's more of a balanced runner um, decent amount of power along with a decent amount of quickness so um, basically the two traits that you want in a running back um, he's a natural runner downhill runner and yeah he's a guy who can just break through the line um, <clears throat> I don't know how impressed I am with his burst um, his burst is kind of average but um, his ability to take hits is pretty impressive um, he can get hit in the legs and keep moving uh, fights for those yards after carry so he's pretty impressive um, as a balanced runner for sure. Um, two things that could use some development. Um, but this goes for most running backs that come out of the draft. is just the receiving and the blocking um, obviously need um, some development. He's not the greatest blocker in pass protection. Um, so that would have to improve. But I don't think that's something that can't change. And yeah, um, there's not a lot of cons. Obviously, the only cons you can really think of um, are the durability issues. His play style is something that could be of concern with the pre-existing injury, so that's something to take into account as well. Um, just how well he'll be able to perform um, for how long with the style of running that he plays with. <clears throat> so that's pretty much the only con. Um, obviously the pass protection could be a little bit better. I think his burst could be a little bit better. Um, and I question his ability to lower his shoulders down the field. Um, instead of just putting his head down um, to take the hit. So that's just some little things that I've noticed throughout watching film. Um, when I watched the tape for Geis, I tried to you know generally stick with um, the 2015-2016 tape, the freshman and sophomore years where the injury wasn't of concern, um, just to see what he's really got in the tank when fully healthy. Uh, but I did watch some film from his latter, the latter end of um, 2017 when he started to recover from that injury, and he was impressive then as well. So it's definitely something that isn't that big of a concern in my eyes, but that's just me. Um, some other things, obviously it would help us out a lot with our new quarterback, Alex Smith. 
if you take a look at his years in Kansas City, uh, he put up better numbers with a good run game. There's no denying it. Um, the stats are there. Last year had a great season with the help of Kareem Hunt in the backfield, who had a very impressive rookie season. <clears throat> so um, to have that nice run game, it would definitely help out Alex Smith a lot to have that run game in place with Geis. So um, that's one thing to take into account as well if we were to select Geis, is that it wouldn't just improve our run game, <clears throat> but ideally our entire offense, um, including the passing game and the way that Alex Smith can um, control the game. So some pro comparisons, um, Ray Rice out of Rutgers. Uh, I would he was someone that I watched a lot um, coming out of Rutgers and in his early years with Baltimore my chair just dropped um, but <clears throat> he kind of plays similar to that he's great at um, running downfield you know the downhill runner he's natural he's got the speed and quickness to, it takes to have that second um, almost like that second reserve tank once he hits the uh, once he gets through the backfield um, he can definitely hit that second gear so he plays similar to Ray Rice, I think, in his early years at Baltimore. Um, and if we all remember, um, personal issues aside, Ray Rice was a very talented runner in Baltimore in those early years. Um, really put up some good numbers. So to have someone like that would be great. Um, our running game hasn't been strong since Alfred Morris. Um, and even before then, you know, you think of like the early years of Clinton Portis, but we've never really had a dominant running game um, as of late, at least. So. I personally would love the pick. I don't know about 13. That seems a little bit early um, compared to what I've seen the projections looking like for Geis' stock. Um, I see him as kind of a late 20s to... Um, I could see him dropping as far as maybe early second, but I see his ideal range um, from the early 20s to just the end of the first. Uh, there's a lot of teams, I think, personally. Teams... That we would have to watch out for if we were to pass on Geis would be Detroit and Pittsburgh in the first round. Um, those are the only two teams I think that might take him in the first round. Besides, yeah, it looks like the only two in the first round that might take him would be uh, Pittsburgh or the what did I say? The Detroit Lions at twenty. So ideally, um, if we were to want Geis, if that's the guy that we want and that's the guy that we're locked in on, um, I think that the opportunity to trade down would be there a couple spots. I don't think we need to trade down that much. And what I mean by that is 15, 16, 17 is um, Arizona, Baltimore, and the Chargers. So those are all teams with older quarterbacks slash retired quarterbacks in the Cardinals. So those are all teams that will be in the market for a quarterback um, to some extent, so I think that they will really, um, especially Baltimore and Los Angeles, uh, sitting at 16 and 17, there's a lot of teams that want to trade up, and they're just going to be worried if their guy's going to be there, um, so for them to move up to 13 would be smart, and it would help us a lot, um, probably recuperate that third round pick, um, potentially more, <clears throat> that we lost in the Alex Smith trade, um, that third round pick, so, if we were to be able to do that, move down to maybe 16 and seven or 17, um, I would love the Geist pick. I would probably give it like a B, uh, just because it's not the hugest position of need, but it is a great player. And, you know, there is the, the uh, belief, I guess, around the league that the, the need for running back um, in the first round is dropping. Uh, there's, but I see that kind of changing. Um, we've seen it. I think it kind of started with Todd Gurley. Uh, I believe the Rams traded up to take him at 10 in 2013, pretty sure. Um, and that's kind of where it all started after that. We saw Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, we saw Leonard Fournette. This year we're going to see Saquon Barkley. So um, it's kind of a trend that's going away in my opinion. The need for a strong run game is getting, um, you know, obviously passing is kind of taking over the NFL in my opinion. Um, it's a pass-heavy league, but... You have to have the run game in place to have a good pass game. So I would like the pick. Um, I don't think it's too early to take him in the first round at all um, based on the talent. A lot of guys have him even as far um, as to put him at running back one in the draft over Saquon Barkley. Um, I've seen it. 
Uh, it's there. There's definitely some, you know, this guy's got some hype around him for sure. So to take him would definitely be a good pick, um, especially if we get trade down. So that's it for this one. Um, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think down below. And as always, if there's a player that you guys like who want you want the Redskins to take who I've not made a video on yet, just let me know down below. I'll make sure to get them out of the way um, and go in-depth on all these guys. So thank you guys for watching. Um, check out the Instagram down below. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. See you guys tomorrow.